All right. So, um, Bashra, uh, you're going to talk with us also about the um, education, information, education, and communication materials um, from also from the shelter uh, teams. Um, so, over to you. Uh, thanks, Juan, and hello, everyone. Uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Bushra and I work with IOM. I'm also from the shelter team. And uh, we, over the past year and a half, we worked on this project um, for the Global Shelter Cluster that is called the Shelter Compendium. Uh, we started this project because we wanted to understand how we are communicating shelter messages with the affected population. Um, what are the existing materials? Where are the gaps? And how we can eventually uh, facilitate the development of new messages. Uh, so we started collecting the, the IC materials that uh, that uh, were existing um, in um, from that the, that that are that were existing but they were like all like scattered some of them were on the um, different websites they on the global shelter cluster website somewhere with different people in their hard drives uh, here and there so we collected all the materials uh, that we could find as a as a starting point and we went through them uh, and we created for the first time a database of uh, of ic materials for the shelter sector um, this database um, now it includes around 700 IC materials and it's keep growing. Um, over um, during this work, we, we had lots of learnings. Uh, we learned a lot how, about how some messages were developed in the past, um, what are the processes that involved in creating them. And um, there were different learnings that we uh, tried to document them and present them in this document that, um, that we shared that came out along the website that is called the Shelter, Docu Shelter Compendium. Uh, one of the interesting things is that we always talk about IEC, um, IEC materials, but there was no exact definition of what we call actually as an IEC material. So we use the definition by WHO that, um, that highlights that actually IECs as an approach and anything that we create, the posters, the players, anything, uh, they are called IEC materials. So the materials that support this approach. And they should be very clear with the objective, the target audience, and the, the channels that they choose for communication. So that was the first learning, because when we started, we started with around 30,000 files uh, that were all called IEC, but we needed to very clearly define who is our target or who is the, what is the objective, and trying to like reduce the number to come up with the IEC materials that, that uh, was in the scope of the project, uh, the shelter settlements IEC materials to uh, communicate with affected populations. Um, so we did different analysis, for example, with this uh, database that we created, we can understand, uh, as I mentioned, where are the gaps and where are the strengths, where are the most materials that we are from and what are the topics, um, or about the languages, as you can see, English was uh, the main language of the IC materials that we were found, that this can be, um, there can be different reasons for that. Maybe like we create IC materials first in English and then we translate them, hopefully, um, and then in the process, maybe we could not capture the translated version, but the English was something that everyone kept. Um, uh, I hope that would be the reason. Um, so this is the publication uh, that that talks about some of the learnings that we had um, over all the process. There are three chapters. The first one is introduction. It talks about the background, the methodology that we use, and some of the learnings. Uh, section A has case studies and opinion pieces, and section B has the review of IC materials. Um, for us, it was very important that we start reviewing this IC materials because this just collecting them in one database would not be very helpful if uh, people cannot come and cannot um, check um, the IECs from different angles, because when a crisis starts, we wanted to facilitate development of new messages. And it would be very helpful if you know that the IECs that you're taking, where it was come from, what was the context? Is it technically accurate? Um, is there any issues with the graphics? What do you need to adjust if you want to use the same material or if you want to adapt it uh, or uh, if you want to use it for creating a new one? So um, these opinions would be very helpful. Um, and um, over from the 700 ICs that we collected, we um, reviewed 200 of them by different experts. And this uh, publication uh, presents 23 of them that are selected. The rest are available in our website. 
Right now, if you go to isc.jacocluster.org, you can see the alpha version of it. We're still working on it, but uh, you can search for different IC materials on shelter and some cross-cutting uh, topics um, and see the reviews. Um, the section A, as I mentioned, includes the case studies and opinion pieces. Um, we collected it during uh, working on the in the files when we were looking if into the process of development of different IC materials um, um, or the things that are involved. Um, one of the interesting ones for CCCM might be probably the case study number 10, which is about how accessible and inclusive are IC materials that, um, that we have and what would be some suggestions to create them. Um, this is the initial stage of course, to make IC materials, um, there's some initial uh, suggestions about making them uh, more accessible and inclusive, and there are much more in it. Uh, but there are interesting tips and interesting resources that you can uh, you can check. Uh, the this section, the review section, as I mentioned, includes like 23 um, ICs, and they are from different topics. Uh, for example, fire safety was one of the topics that we tried to include um, in this 23 selected um, ICs, or something about a CFM from Pakistan, some ICs uh, material. Um, uh, how this section is presented is at the left side. You always see the different. Um, uh, review categories that we had, as I mentioned, technical accuracy can be graphic clarity, the potential to cause unintended harm, um, text clarity. So these were the different criteria that we used to um, review these materials and the comments from each reviewer. And then there are small boxes that are called communication tips. And there are uh, so many of them on different related topics to, to the ICs when we were working. Um, and they're very interesting. Some of them are like some stories uh, or some of the information from the researchers, some highlight, for example, if you want to um, uh, some of, for example, this one on the right uh, is a study that was conducted in Nepal and uh, when they draw just a sample shelter for people and they ask, uh, what is this? And it's interesting that um, almost just half of the people could say it's a shelter. Um, and it, this is very important because uh, we think that uh, everyone would be able to later understand what, what are the images that we have on this IC without any words, without any explanation, and without even like communicating with them at the beginning and involving people to understand um, since the beginning uh, if if this is the same way that they draw things or this this gives them the same idea. Um, the other one, the other interesting thing I want to mention is like this other communication tip about who you trust, um, the different communication um, channels that you choose or different messengers that you choose for uh, receiving the information. Um, and there was very interesting st study that we saw from Haiti that uh, they use uh, to communicate the messages. They use, for example, a person who had type of disability um, and it, he was very much well known in the community. And he was the one that was broadcasting the messages through the radio programs. Um, uh, so different media platforms um, are, are um, this is one of the things that we wanted to always highlight that uh, don't go based on assumptions and choose a media platform to broadcast the message and it doesn't work in some cases. Um, in Nepal, there was a study that uh, showed that, for example, men and women had have different preferences on the communication channel, um, and they uh, received the information differently. Some of them were um, feeling much better if they go and directly talk uh, to their neighbor. Some of them wanted to like uh, have it like um, in other uh, in other forms. And also, um, as always, it's unfortunately highlighted the gap that for people who had disability, it was not very much. Uh, engaging. Um, or something else, for example, uh, if you want to have some messages about PSEA, how to avoid um, sexual exploitation and abuse in your AC materials, um, what are the different languages that you can involve? And we took this from, um, from the IS guideline, for example. Um, so this reviews from the reviewers um, goes on different uh, angles. For example, potential to cause intended harm from technical messages, also from the graphics, how we actually convey the message. Uh, it was mentioned that for some communities, if you simply just put a cross or tick, they may not understand what you mean, or even the message itself uh, might be misleading, just actually like encouraging you to do something rather than preventing it. Um, 
some of, uh, it, during the process, we were thinking, um, we designed the process, the review process in a way that we can do com check communication effectiveness of IEC materials, go to the communities and check it with them. Um, we couldn't do much of it because of COVID, but we, we did uh, one or two. Uh, one of them was in chat that we used this IEC material on the left, as you can see. And we checked with, uh, with the community how they can understand the images. Um, it was interesting um, that they mentioned what you can see on the top uh, left, the process, uh, the things that you can do, for example, if, uh, if you catch fire, what you do. Everyone said that it's very confusing and they think that they may forget it if something like some incidents happen. Um, and they have different suggestions, like they mentioned, like why you are showing this, but not that. Um, this is this is something that we think we may remember more. Um, uh, the other interesting thing about this IC, for example, was that they were not convinced. They were talking with us, asking, for example, why we should not block the uh, space between the two tents. It just tell me don't block it, but it doesn't explain why. So it raised lots of coming, uh, lots of discussions about why they should not do it. And uh, this is one of the things that um, in one of one other communication tip box in this IC, we're trying to highlight, saying that to change the behavior, you always have to talk about the negative um, impacts of what if you do that thing, not just saying don't do this or do it like that. And it was proven uh, for shelter cases um, through a study that CRS did, um, measuring the impacts uh, of some of their, um, their activities. Um, so some of the learnings that um, at the end of this uh, work, we try to come up with a list of main important learnings that we had along the way. And uh, right now what we're doing is uh, we are trying to uh, make these messages very simple and catchy through like very short animations and um, share it in the social media for practitioners. Uh, this is the first message, for example, some messages never changed. Um, we realized, for example, for the use of tarpaulin um, since 1970s, um, when the first drawing um, came out in this booklet that you're just about to see right now. Uh, then we just copy pasted the same image, we created a different IEC, the message didn't change, but the question is how are we doing it right now? The same applies to fire safety messages. For example, we know that this poster was created until 2005 in Pakistan. Um, and since then we are still like using the same poster, using the same images. The question is, was this ever tested in any place? What do people think? Can they actually understand it? Um, is it effective? Uh, is there anything else we want to communicate based on the context? Um, so this was one of the questions that we had. Um, and at the end of the discussion, I want um, also to discuss about it. What are the important messages for CCCM, for example, that, uh, that you think it's very important to work on? Is fire safety one of them? Um, the next message, uh, the next learning is that people have different perspective. As I mentioned, um, we just draw an image of a shelter and then we, we think that people will understand what we drew. And the study shows that actually just 50% of people could say what it is. Um, on the previous session, we talked about uh, something that we called an elephant in the room. Uh, this is a different story. It calls an elephant in the dark room. It's a small difference. Uh, it's a very well-known study, a very well-known story from the region that I'm from. Um, it's a story from Rumi uh, that says that an elephant was brought to a population that didn't know the animal uh, and they were very curious. So they couldn't wait till the next day and they went in the dark at night to the room that the elephant was kept to see what animal it is. And different people tried to touch different part of the elephant and they had different understanding. One person thought, oh, that's a snake. Oh, maybe that's... Um, that's uh, that may be like a pillar or I don't know what it is. And different people had different understanding based on their previous knowledges. Um, so this story actually later says that uh, if they were coming in the room with a candle or someone who could tell us, who could tell them and guide them to sit together and then with the candle they could see everything, they would understand what the animal is. And this is the stories of how we develop IC materials. We take them from the context that they were created, we put it somewhere else, we don't um, think that communication is a two-way street, we need to consult with people and then we create something that may mean different things for different people. Um, the other learning was that communication materials are more than a poster. I started this uh, session saying that 
um, IECs, uh, the, a poster is not an IEC, a poster is an IEC material, and there should be a process of communication, uh, in community engagement and um, uh, communication strategy alongside with the IEC. Uh, otherwise, it would be not successful um, with the IEC material, with the poster. But there are other things as well. Um, as we know that uh, when you're developing an IEC, there are lots of things coming. Uh, there are lots of politics involved in creating an IEC. Sometimes you want to actually convey a message technically, but it's not accepted in that location. There are lots of coordination. Uh, there are lots of uh, communication, consultation. What are the, the local uh, beliefs? What are the local uh, availability of, for example, for shelter? What are the materials that are available? So there is much, much more than that. And then at the end, you just see the poster. And, and we even don't like use a good um, good strategy for sharing that information on the poster. Um, so these are the seven learnings. Uh, the three gifts that you just saw are three of these learnings and we are still working on the four others, but I can just um, mention what are the other learnings that we had. For example, um, access to information. As we know, access to information is a right for all, uh, but when we create the IC materials, the first thing that we think about is the accuracy uh, in terms of technicality. Um, but we forget about like how accessible it is. And by accessibility, I mean like inclusiveness to people with different gender, different age, people with disabilities. Um, the other thing is that IC materials evolve during the response. You cannot expect like creating a message at the beginning of the response and then keep going on with that thing for forever. Um, with, with the shelter IC materials from Cox's Bazaar, we documented how the process evolved during the work and they created six or seven versions of the same message. They went each time to the camp, they checked uh, if did people change the way that they're constructing, they started with, for example, 12 messages, and later they just reduced it to four because they realized that, for example, 12 messages so much, but maybe the four key ones would work better. Uh, there was a 3D model of a house, and later they realized it's a bit hard for people to understand. They made it 2D, they made it simpler. Uh, there were some some messages that were communicated and then later they went and checked that it doesn't work and they realized why it's not working and then they changed the message. Um, in shelter sector, we realize that uh, IEC materials can generally benefit from evaluation uh, and the review of their impact. There is very, very um, few studies that measures the impact of the shell of the of the messages, um, and there are very, very few also times that we test the IEC material with the affected population. There's a, there's um, one of the case studies in this publication actually talks about the process that. Um, that shelter box used to uh, test the IEC materials um, in a flood situation in Uruguay. Um, and it was interesting because the, the translation of the material uh, was actually, um, it, it didn't work. So people were, were thinking uh, very different things from the actual message. That was one of the key points um, that came out from their work. Um, they, they had different, uh, understandings of different messages. It was first when they, for example, looked at the image, they, they thought of something. When they read it, it was something else. The actual message was something different. Uh, so testing is very important and we are usually um, skipping that stage. Uh, and finally, um, I think it's worth stressing again that IC material are not a solution at their own, on their own and they need to be contextualized and have a role of strategy to be, to be successful. Um, I want to, okay, we are good in terms of timing and I want to raise three questions for the discussions that we, we can have um, on the remaining time. Uh, from the CCCM side, how do you use IC materials to communicate? How do you think we can improve the effectiveness and impact of messaging? And uh, maybe um, a very important question is, uh, what are the most important messages for IC materials and what are the gaps that you that you see um, in CCCM? I was thinking that maybe I can call Ingrid also to up to answer some of these questions as well. I, th I see you still with us, Ingrid. Or not anymore. <laughs> but I don't know if Brian will also want to say anything um, since you were also kind of 
involved at the beginning at the like very early stage of collecting and whether you see some kind of trends and challenges of the IEC materials that were being shared yeah it was really interesting kind of looking at the development of this uh, over time from the initial like collection of so many different materials and then kind of trying to categorize them and then the reviewers reviewer stage where you have uh, technical experts reviewing the quality but then also adding in the people who would be uh, viewing or, or using the materials having their perspective on on the, the usability and, and um, communications of it. And from a CCM perspective, you know, at the beginning I was very like excited, like how we could replicate this for CCM. And some of the challenges I've, I've seen so far with, with applying this approach to CCM are perhaps, uh, do we have the same volume of information um, IEC materials? Uh, is CCM a little bit too context specific in terms of the messaging we have? Um, is a lot of our messaging actually very cross-cutting across other sectors? Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd really love to, to hear more from our CCM colleagues on what approach we should use, maybe similar to this for IEC materials. Mm. I'm going to, while we're waiting for others, I'm going to ask Bruce to maybe come in and, and counter this on. I think it's, it's interesting to look at information sharing from, from our side as well. Yeah, I mean, I think we've been discussing, um, you know, internally, like what a potential CCCM compendium uh, might look like. Because um, I, I, you know, from my side, I mean, if I look on my hard drive, I can find like 15 different versions of service monitoring tools and, you know, like eight different messaging strategies. So I think it, there probably is a bit of scope to kind of like take the really good work, the format that sort of the shelter cluster have worked on and try and provide maybe a compendium of tools and guidance for CCCM practitioners. And I don't, I don't know what people who are listening think, um, whether or not they think this is something that is, that's a good idea that could be useful um, to the sort of like community of practice within CCCM. Um, and I, I, you know, I, one, I don't know how, how you want to take that forward if we did. Mm. Cause I was thinking that also often, you know, we, we manage just like the information board um, yeah. And this can have a whole like range of information. And I think the kind of key information that we're responsible for is, is also around, um, you know, sharing information about the site, right? And also often have like kind of who's working there and who's responsible, like, you know, camp committees, you know, who people can find basically. It's about making sure that people living in the camps also have clear kind of like information on who they can reach out to um, for specific topics. Um, Jen, did you want to come in to say that as well? Yeah, let me find the unmute. I, I, I think that in CCTM we could do some really basic IEC materials that are like introducing the camp management agency and where you find things. I mean, just kind of picking up on what you're saying one and that those things, while they are context specific in the, in the messages that, you know, the like introducing yourself is is something that's key and and, you know, providing information um, uh, that could be, you know, kind of easily replicatable from a template standpoint would be really quite useful. And, and that could also try to reinforce um, what are some of the key actions that you take when you start managing a camp and, and that social side, which is really, really essential. So over. It's true. Cause I think if we look at it kind of like as a broader communication tool, you know, just making sure that everyone's also aware of, of what your camp managers is is able to provide and, and what our uh, tasks is. Um, Kat, I see, do you wanna talk to us also? Sure, I think I'm unmuted now. So um, as I mentioned in the first session today, we had this exact same conversation in the capacity building group at the retreat in 2019. And the number one thing that everyone agreed is if we want more organizations to be able to start from zero in doing cap management and to come in and we really want to engage in capacity building, 
the first thing that we would need is to gather all these materials that we have from every response we've worked in in one common place. And Juan, as you were saying, you know, so much of what we learn country to country is um, from from just asking our friends and saying, hey, do you have a tool for that? But it would be so much more egalitarian if someone could just go to the CCCM cluster website, click on the Google Drive and find it themselves. And I really think this would help us with future localization. Yeah. Over. <laughs> I think that's not a bad idea, actually. Um, we, we started a discussion with HLP AOR and, and actually that's what we're doing. We just have a Google Drive of, of different tools from different countries um, that we're collecting. Um, as well. Um, it seems you've opened a much bigger discussion, Bashra. I think now the, the demand is just everything. I think CCCM Compendium is, is a good uh, name for, you know. Yeah, I mean, It'll be never I, ending. <laughs> yeah, just, just, uh, just a warning. We started <laughs> with 30,000 files um, because uh, of the reason that the scope was not very clear. And what helped us to be very uh, to reduce the number and very, be very um, clear about what we want is to define what we mean by these IC materials, for example, for us, who's the who's the audience. So once we said that the audience is affected population, and we still like include the messages that are not created for affected population directly, but they can be used, for example, with small adaptation, because you know that the graphics can be the same, sometimes uh, the drawings can be used for, so we still included those. And from 30,000 files, we reduced it to 700, um, which is uh, <laughs> which is considerable uh, reduction. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually interested if anyone um, has any idea about the fire safety ICs, because this is something that we see the fires uh, spreading in many places right now. Uh, what do we think about the IC materials on the fire safety? Did we actually create new one? Are we still going with the same IC material? What is the need for that? Yeah, and you know, personally, I've I've edited that same one a couple of times to change clothing of people and maybe change kitchen drawing and so on. So. You know, I'm also guilty of just repeating and, and using the, the same posters. And, and I'm not sure if we've actually checked whether it's like commonly understood or, or not. Um, I don't know if you, anyone wants to comment around fire safety, but I also before you go, Bosha, I also wanna ask if we're gonna start on this CCCM compendium, do you have any advice? Um, for, okay. Uh, first of all, have the scope very clear. Um, it doesn't, I mean, I think for CCCM you have, you may want to include more materials other than just uh, to target beneficiaries. So you may also have, we have some stuff also for advocacy that are very interesting to look at and they can be used in different places. Um, so the first thing that I have is like scope is everything. <laughs> Otherwise you have lots of files to deal with. Um, we have some experiences in creating the database and the taxonomy that we created at the beginning. Um, uh, that was also very helpful. So the most of the time for creating the database uh, was spent on creating a clear taxonomy that would be later searchable uh, and easy to find the materials and uh, the, the scope. And there's something that we call cross-cutting. And we later realized this cross-cutting is becoming very huge. There are different things going into it. So very well defining what is cross-cutting for you. Do you want to take it out of the cross-cutting box and put it as a separate topic or not? And how we did it was that we put everything in cross-cutting first, and then we see how many materials do we have? What is the need for it? If people are searching this and then they don't find it because it was under cross-cutting, for example. And then we took it as a separate category out and became a category on its own. I think that's a bit the story of our lives around uh, <laughs> cross-cutting. Um, I think just last minute, and then um, thank you so much, Bashra, for, for sharing the, the process, but also the product of, of your, um, actually, it's been a few years, right? A year and a half now. A year and a half, right. Um, and I, I really encourage everyone to check out, I think some of the, the review process of some of these IEC materials, you can see some of the quotes and comments of reviewers. And they're pretty direct, I have to say. There are some great quotes in there on comments and what they think about the, the graphics and the diagrams being used. So I think there's a lot of lessons learned for us 
not in terms of only just creating CCCM compendium, but also for what you're currently using in, in your context to communicate um, with people uh, living in and, and outside of, of the camps.